Welcome, everybody, to the first ever episode of the Bits and Barbells podcast. My name is Backsate, and I'm with my co-host, Ben S. Wolfson. Ben, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. I'm Ben. I'm a software engineer at Meta. I've been working for around a year now, and I'm looking forward to collaborating with Backsate. Yeah, so uh, Ben is actually my friend. He lives out here in San Francisco. Um, We don't live together, but when I first moved here, we kind of linked in a really kind of interesting way. Um, Ben does a lot of production stuff with cameras, and uh, I had just started my TikTok, and I knew I wanted some photos. And so he posted on his story that he actually took some really good photos and I was like, yo, let's link up. You can take some photos of me. And from there, we just kind of kept talking and it turns out we have a lot of in common. And um, now this podcast is born. Yeah. And one of the things that I'll say to that is we met like freshman year of college, but honestly, we didn't speak really at all throughout that four year period. Um, even though we had each other added on Instagram and Snapchat somehow, but, you know, it's just so interesting how you can meet somebody and then convene with them at a later point in your life. Um, and engaging with activities that you enjoy can bring you together or, you know, bring you apart. But for us, it brought us together and here we are. Yeah. So, um, as I mentioned, this is the first episode, uh, we're calling it bits and barbells. This podcast can sort of go in a couple different directions. Um, we have some passions, which align, which of course are software engineering, fitness, general life stuff. Um, but this is the first episode and the theme of this first episode is getting ready for your first internship, sort of the roadmap or the blueprint to landing your first internship in tech Um, which is really breaking yourself into the field. Um, So without further ado, I think we should just get right into it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that first internship, that is by far the hardest thing that you'll have to crack. Yeah. And so um, really, once you get your foot in the door, there is a lot of other things you can think of. But I think that there are many people out there who uh, are interested in software engineering, uh, maybe in high school, maybe in college, but uh, just don't feel like they know what to do to to have that first step. Um, And so that's what this episode is for. So uh, please leave a like if you're on YouTube and subscribe. And um, Ben, why don't you get started um, with some advice? Yeah, I mean, I guess the first thing that I'll start off by saying is for your first internship, you're probably a freshman or sophomore, which means that you don't have a lot of experience yet. And with that, you also don't have a lot of knowledge. So really the first kind of piece of advice I recommend is to adjust your mindset. You need to be going into this first internship search with the knowledge that, you know, you might not get paid a lot for what you're doing. And kind of in line with that, you should be ready to take an unpaid position if possible. Uh, Because really the value proposition with you and this first employer is, hey, you're going to do this work for them. You may not get paid a lot, but what you're going to get from that is something you can put on your resume, which you can then leverage in the future. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I think framing the first internship in a way that maybe is a little bit different than what you've seen on TikTok or these other, you know, mediums. I think that a lot of, you know, we're in the age where everything gets glorified and uh, many people will therefore have the expectation that, you know, oh, I'm studying computer science or maybe not even studying computer science, but I'm going to go land this internship that's going to pay me, you know, 40, 60, even upwards of like $90 an hour in some of the crazy cases. Um, and you know, a, a lot of my content, if you watch me on my other platforms is really giving like actionable stuff, but also being realistic. So I think that attitude of what this internship really, the value should that you should look for is not something that's a dollar amount because this is your entry point into a hopefully a very long and fruitful career. So don't focus so much on the number value, especially for the first one. Yeah. I mean, you really need to be in it for the long haul and kind of having a long-term mindset as a as opposed to like a short kind of get rich scheme kind of mindset that's the way you really need to go about things um, absolutely I, I mean personally I after I got my internship my freshman year I thought hey I'm gonna make it to big tech next summer and you know I'm gonna be balling out from here but it was not the case and I actually never interned at big tech so 
Oh, yeah, that's a, that's interesting to know. Yeah, um, I also had a, it, my first internship. Mine was after my sophomore year, um, but similarly not at a very, you know, sort of fancy company that uh, gets the gets the clicks online and stuff like that. Um, but really what I want to get into now is the roadmap, right? What what do you do to land that first internship? And I think it fundamentally comes down to, uh, guys, I'm talking about, or, and girls, sorry, but I'm, talk, <laughs> I'm talking about college here um, because I recommend, you know, the easiest way to get into software engineering is the route of going to university. So this entire episode is generally going to be kind of through that lens. So if you're thinking about going the boot camp or other route, um, sorry, we can make videos on that later. Right now we're talking about university. Um, but I think something to note is that a lot of the advice we're going to be giving is just kind of broadly oriented to getting internships in general. So it will be applicable even if you are in a boot camp. It just won't be as directly applicable. Sure. Yes. So uh, that being said, uh, when you go to college and you're studying computer science or a related field, I know that uh, some colleges offer software engineering now. I personally studied computer engineering, which is kind of like a mix between software and hardware. And there can be a couple other ones, but something that's going to teach you coding, right, in school. Um, you have sort of this bar before you really feel comfortable doing a lot of the stuff that an internship would want you to do. And so uh, you need to take stuff like, obviously, if you've never taken a coding class before, there's going to be an intro to coding class. You might learn Python, you might learn Java. And then after that, you'll usually have an introduction to object oriented programming or something similar to that. And then usually you'll take some form. Most colleges offer data structures and algorithms. Now, uh, this is by far, in my opinion, the most important course that you'll take in not only college, but for specifically software engineering uh, is data structures and algorithms, because this is really the fundamentals of uh, building these large systems, but also the stuff that you'll see in the interviews, right? The technical interviews that you'll see to get um, into your first internship or whatever internship. Um, I saw very similar problems in virtually every problem or every interview I had. And so, um, Really, once you're in college, I would say until you take data structures and algorithms, it might be kind of difficult to land an internship. Um, so I don't know if you have anything to add off that right there. Yeah, I mean, what I'll say off of that is, to be honest with you, lead code isn't even going to make sense if you don't have that data structures and algorithms background. Um, intro to object oriented programming is a little bit less applicable to lead code, but vastly applicable to actual on the job work. Um, but honestly, if you look at lead code and you don't know data structures and algorithms, you're going to be so confused and you're not going to be able to do even probably easies to a large extent. Yeah. Uh, so uh, for those who maybe aren't aware or don't know fully, lead code is a site where you can go practice the <laughs> very specific type of problems that you'll see in these technical interviews, especially at a lot of the places that, you know, are very sought after, right? The, the Googles, the metas of the world, um, they all, because they have such a wide top of the funnel of people applying, they need a very efficient way to test people and to see whether they can code. That sort of over time has developed into these very specific type of problems that you can practice on lead code. There's a couple other sites that are similar and, you know, have up, up, other practices. Um, but, uh, I, if I understand correctly, Ben, you kind of uh, may have a different mindset when it comes to prepping for lead code or um, what companies you should look for specifically for your first internship. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. I mean, this was the case for me, and this is kind of my general prescription advice, is for that first internship, you're actually going to want to look for a company that doesn't do lead code questions. Uh, and this is because the companies that don't do lead code generally are quote unquote easier to get. Um, not to say that they're actually easier to get, but it's just kind of easier to get your foot in the door because they're generally not as strict and they generally don't have as much competition to get in. Uh, so those are the kind of companies you're actually gonna be wanting to get. Uh, and so what I recommend, first of all, is the number one thing you wanna do is reach out to literally every human you know who works at a company with software engineers. And you're going to want to ask them, hey, does your company have an internship available? Uh, and obviously, if that's the case, then you say, hey, can I have a referral to this internship? Uh, and that's kind of the first place that you should be really starting here. Yeah. I think that's some great advice is uh, trying to exhaust your network as much as possible 
And uh, really, again, you, the the point of the first internship is to get your foot into the door of this you know world of careers that is technology and specifically for software engineering. Um, obviously, starting off really high would be great, uh, but we're trying to do something. We're trying to give advice here that is applicable to the most amount of people, and virtually everyone has a company near them that uses software engineers in some capacity, it might not be the Microsoft, it might not be the Facebook or the Google, et cetera. But, um, you know, I like to use the example of we both went to school in Atlanta. Um, you know who else needs software engineers? Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Delta. They're not software companies, but they hire interns and you might have a better chance of getting into those because of what you said, the competition's lower and you might not even be asked the leak code question, which I know is uh, a lot of people are rejoicing when they hear that. Yeah, I mean, I certainly know that before I even started doing Lico questions, I was honestly so afraid of that kind of style. Uh, it was something that I, it like genuinely made me afraid. And I honestly thought that, hey, I had all these like grand expectations for myself. Like, hey, you know, I'm at computer science. I'm at Georgia Tech, you know, pretty smart guy. I thought I could get pretty high up in the world, but... I think something that you need to realize is this career journey is a journey, right? And it's something that you need to build upon step by step. So getting from point A to all the way to the end to like point B at like the big company, the big fang or whatever, it's simply not realistic. You need to be doing little incremental steps to get up, right? That's, that's kind of my prescription and it's actually the path that I took. Um, yeah, that's great. I think that's that's really great advice. Um, now, for those who don't have maybe the network, um, I think that there still are ways to try and maybe connect with some of these people at these companies, right? You don't have to know somebody personally. There are tools like LinkedIn, um, which I recommend that everybody, your freshman year, you should create a LinkedIn. Make sure that you have a, a nice photo, a nice headshot, and you're not gonna get a job from this automatically, right? But it's a tool at your disposal. Similarly, your resume, it should be up to date uh, pretty much always, especially if you think you're gonna be applying to internships soon. Having these tools will allow you to be as prepared as possible and sort of that's really all this is is giving yourself the best chance possible so reaching out to people on linkedin who you may know not know etc um but that sort of i guess is a good segue into um the resume if that's i think i think really quickly i want to hone in on that linkedin part because i abuse linkedin like i honestly dm like hundreds of people over the course of my entire college career and i think at that point, right, having a good profile picture is actually super underrated, right? Because imagine somebody reaches out to you, you work at this company full time, right? You work eight hours a day and then you come home, it's like maybe 6 p.m. and you're just looking through your LinkedIn, right? Just kind of scrolling through your feed and you see, oh, I have a message from this kid. Uh, what's going on? And then he's got like, some, or she's got some awful like profile picture that or looks no, like- Or no profile or picture. Or no profile picture and you just look like this anonymous shadowy figure on the internet right? It's not a good look. So having like an actual image that somebody can connect with, so massive and and so underrated. So get a good profile picture. And then what you're going to want to do is obviously, if you don't have any immediate connections in your kind of personal network, is you go on LinkedIn, look for companies that are in your area, primarily, that's like the first companies you're going to want to look for. And you're going to sort by employees, like on the, the search filter, So employees who work at this company and they're in software engineering, right? That's the filter. Look through, I don't know, all those people and then just pick, go through look all their profiles and see which ones that you might empathize with or have similar backgrounds to you or have different things linked in their profile that you can connect with personally. And then you write a message that tailors to that specific individual like, hey, I'm looking for an internship. I saw you have this XYZ on your profile and I'm also interested in XYZ for for Z reason and so on and so forth. And that's kind of the approach I took. And honestly, I got a pretty good reply rate, even though it didn't always convert into like an actual job. I got a pretty decent reply rate. So for what it's worth, you know, it helps. Yeah, no, that is some great advice. That's a uh 
not something that I actually, I feel like almost I wasted some time on LinkedIn based <laughs> on what you just told me. But um, no, that's great, everyone. I hope you were listening to that. Um, and it also goes to show that, you know, we both uh, were at Georgia Tech, which is a, a pretty up there school in terms of rankings. And yet um, there's still things that you can do to sort of stand out and go above and beyond. And I think that honestly, the people, if you're at a school that maybe isn't as highly ranked, some of these things can really set you apart of what you just said. It's about the effort you put in, how you present yourself. And I think that you can overcome a lot of the things that people may think, oh, well, you know, I go to X school, so why would I even apply or um, stuff? My GPA is this. And so why would I even apply? I think that what you just said, it, it shows that there's a level of effort and a level of things you can do to give yourself the best chance possible. Right. I mean, it's all about tenacity. You know, you need to have an unbreaking spirit and you need, you need to go into every potential interaction with like an energy about you because nobody wants to talk to somebody who's like wallowing and depressed or whatever. It's just not, you don't want to talk to that person, right? So you need to be energetic, you need to be upbeat and you need to be excited. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, I think tenacity and uh, will be a theme that comes up in probably a lot of episodes we talk sure. about. That's something that I think we both share in common. Um, but yeah, I think the next thing that I want to talk about is this uh resume, right? And what are things that you should put on your resume? Uh, because usually when you're applying to your first internship, you might not have very much experience and probably have no experience in the field you're talking about because it's your first internship, right? Um, so some resume do's and don'ts that I've experienced, that I've talked to hiring people, like hiring managers, etc., that I want to bestow upon you um, are as follows, right? Uh, firstly, the most basic stuff, formatting, basic, Use a boring template. Uh, use a black sans serif font. <laughs> serif is the little squigglies. Black sans serif font. Please uh, do not plaster your resume with a bunch of JPEGs and other random images. It, it does not help. Trust exactly. me. Exactly. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. The first one is that um, when you, if people are. People genuinely need to know where to look to find certain information. If they're struggling to find stuff quickly, um, then you may as well have not applied at all. And the second reason is that many uh, companies these days use algorithms to actually filter a lot of resumes. If they're getting hundreds of thousands of applications, that simply cannot be looked at by a human for every single one. And so they have keywords and stuff that they like to pick up on, which I'll go into in a second. But formatting, basic. Um, the next thing is that your experiences that you have listed, if they do not communicate your ability to be a software engineer, even if that means like a transitive uh, sort of property can be good. But uh, the example I like to use is if you worked at Jimmy John's, that's great. Um, it's probably better to put stuff like the relevant coursework you've already taken than to have Jimmy John's take up a lot of your resume because the relevant coursework will show stuff like whether it's, you know, we mentioned intro to object oriented programming. I mean, what about Jimmy John's? You know, you're putting together a sandwich. That's kind of an algorithmic approach, <laughs> right? I guess you could say that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think I think Jimmy John's is actually a good example. So if Jim you have Jimmy John's, leave it on your resume. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Jersey Mike's, get rid of it. No. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, I think that having a, a section for relevant coursework, if you don't have any experiences yet in the field, is great. Uh, similarly, projects is another one that I, uh, I recommend. And then uh, a section dedicated to technical skills. I, when I, I used to review a lot of people's resumes um, from I was in a fraternity in college. And as I got older, people would give me their resumes, be exactly this question of, I want to land my first internship. I don't have much experience. Can you look at my resume? And they'll throw... Python and SQL next to Spanish, next to public speaking. And uh, it, it's all under skills or something, right? And it's, um, those right, aren't like weighted. Like a catch-all, a yeah, catch-all of skills. Exactly, and those aren't weighted equally. If I'm a hiring manager, no, I need to know that you know Python and SQL. I, you know, public speaking might be great, but um, which is why I say a section dedicated to technical skills, the frameworks you know, the languages you know, which again, at this point might not be that much, but maybe you've taken a couple courses and you might have a couple languages under your belt. Um, I think projects from and courses maybe, are fine. You know, even if you don't necessarily know these frameworks, obviously I'm not advocating for lying outright, but you know, a little white lie never hurt anybody, right? So that's right. If you have some experience in something, just toss it in there, you know, even if you just looked at it once or twice. It can help a little bit. It can I help agree. a little bit. I completely If it was a unit in a class, you know, throw it on. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, generally you want to 
list the things that will make you as hireable as possible that you don't have the experiences for and not to start bloating the things that aren't relevant because I think that's the biggest problem people will do is they're start adding stuff like uh, you know the their awards from high school if they want to track meets you know so on and so forth um, again all of that makes you an interesting person the algorithm unfortunately may not care if you're a track star right they do care that you have experience with a framework yeah, um, and something I just want to kind of note on this is that I feel like the the CS major engineering types are really prone to adding that high high school stuff because you know generally speaking you were pretty successful in high school right and you like to bring those accomplishments with you to college but the truth is that those accomplishments really mean nothing now and really what you're doing is you're operating under the assumption that people still care about what you did in high school when the reality is that, hey, it doesn't really matter at this point anymore. So uh, that's just kind of a, a misguided realization that you need to all kind of go through. And it's something that I went through and I'm sure Carter went through too. Yeah, absolutely. I think that there is a, a humbling experience. Um, like you said, I think that a lot of type A people are very driven, very smart people are going into these fields. And um, once you go into college, it is kind of like a reset. You kind yeah. of go back to the, not the bottom of the totem pole, but it, in a sense you are in that you're now gunning for your first entrance, aka your first internship yeah. into something. You're not, you're, you're trying to say, I might not be fully qualified yet, but take a chance on me because I'm as you know, qualified as I can be. It's kind of like when the asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs, right? That, that's kind of the reset counter we're talking about when you get into college. You need to kind of leave everything in the past. Yeah, absolutely. But those are some resume tips um, that I would implore. So take a serious look at your own resume. Um, and if you have any of these sort of faux pas that I mentioned, consider you know just uh, just revitalizing <laughs> it a little bit yeah, yeah. because um, you know that's the first thing that will uh, be the gateway. That's the first thing that everybody looks at um, when they're thinking about even giving you an interview. Um, which I guess we can then start talking about the actual interview um, of maybe these smaller companies, or maybe we yeah, could go yeah. over a story of um, our actual first interviews at the internship that we landed. Yeah, I can I can talk about that a little bit. So I, I kind of mentioned this before, but this company that I interviewed with for my first internship, I won't name them by name, but they did not give leak code questions. And actually the entire interview process was basically behavioral from start to finish. It was kind of a technical behavioral in the sense that they asked me about, hey, what's your favorite project that you worked on? Kind of questions of that nature. And at the end of the interview, I actually was like, yo, I was surprised that you guys didn't give me a leak code question, uh, to which they obviously reply like, hey, you, you know, why don't we actually do that? You know, you, you down for that? And I was like, yeah, why not? And then they ended up giving me some like super easy problem that I, I blew out of the park and they were like, they were like astounded that I did this thing, right? Um, so, but that's kind of that energy that I was talking about, right? I mean, how many people, if they were kind of called out on that that question, right, would have been like, oh, no, I actually don't want a lead code question, right? It's like you need to have a little bit of energy and, and kind of risk in your behavior. Yeah. Um, do you think that there was anything that you did in the interview that people could, uh, it's sort of in that vein, but beyond energy, um, you know, the way you answered certain questions or um, the way you uh, carried yourself yeah. that would, that other people Definitely. could try? Well, I, I'll, I'll actually, I'll point this out since it's, it's kind of a mistake and you should never do this if you're interviewing for a software engineering position. Okay. I show up to my first internship interview in a suit okay please do not do this i did the same thing i'm you, so embarrassed i did the same thing you should never do this because this is not something that people do but i showed up in a suit right i mean so i guess from somewhat of the get-go i was in a kind of you know i was put together you know i was looking spiffy so it was kind of good in that sense but i will say do not do that um another thing that i think i did well besides energy uh, i did bring energy but i had prepared and to a large extent I prepared responses to common questions like tell me about yourself favorite project favorite class that kind of thing these are all routine questions that you need to have a response for on the ready yeah 
Um, I think that that's great. Uh, and a lot of the things that you said, <laughs> I think I either did, uh, maybe subconsciously yeah, yeah. or overtly in the in the case of the suit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do so you have any other like stories from yours? I do. Yeah. Um, so. I, uh, similar, very similarly, it was a company nearby to the school, uh, nearby Georgia Tech. Again, I'm not going to say the name. Um, wasn't directly asked lead code questions, but I was asked to code on a whiteboard. But again, the standard was significantly lower when you compare it to some of the other um, sort of online assessments or interviews I experienced later with those FANG types. This was after my sophomore summer, and they actually asked me a logic question. Um, which I thought was interesting. And, um, you know, you think about when you, I think they were trying to do the old uh, adage of like the Google mind teaser when you hear oh, yeah. that. That's, that's kind of the attitude that I How got. How many people live in the bottom of no, wherever on the I, well? Actually, I, I still remember it. Um, so I can say it now really quickly. It's, it's not a long one um, that I'll let you guys puzzle if you'd like to, which is uh, there are three baskets, right? And uh, they're labeled oranges, apples, or orange and apples, right? The buckets. Mm -hmm. And, they're all mislabeled, as in you know for 100% certainty that every bucket currently has the wrong label on it. Mm. By se selecting one fruit from one bucket, correctly label all buckets. So that was the logic. That's, a, that's an interesting one. So you guys can try that out. But I was asked that during an interview. Um, it took me a little bit, but I didn't end up solving it. Um, but yeah, similar, very similar in that, uh, the questions were way more behavioral based. Um, I feel like the standard for the coding was a lot lower. And at this point, um, I think I had either just taken data structures and algorithms, or maybe was currently in the course at the time I interviewed. And so, uh, I would have been woefully unprepared again, if I were applying to, um, one of these fang type, uh, companies. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, kind of interesting that we have similar experiences. Um, obviously, you know, we are at companies now that maybe a lot of people would either aspire to work for. Um, but I think it's important to, to note that, you know, we started in positions where we took the one first that, um, does not bring, you know, home a lot of clout for example. <laughs> Yeah. Not exactly a clout chasing proposition with that yeah. first position. Yeah. Um, so I think another topic in relating th that a lot of people have when it comes to internships is how, when, and where do I apply? Um, this is one that I get a lot on, on my different platforms. And I think that it's different uh, based on where you are. But again, for this, we're going to kind of talk about the general internship college recruiting cycle, because I think that's the one that's most popular. And obviously in that vein, the most popular is summer uh, internships. I think that as software engineering has really developed and the internship uh, process has really developed, um, most companies I know will start hiring in uh, the really you know intense companies will hire the summer prior. Yeah. But most of them, I find that the general recruiting cycle is the fall for the following summer. Is that something that you would agree with? I would agree. Um, but actually, for the first internship that I had, the interview was like in March. Uh, so... Some companies do have a little bit of a later cycle, which is good for you freshmen out there who, you know, first semester, you actually have zero knowledge. You know, I, I came into college with zero knowledge at all. Uh, I took AP CS in high school, but I didn't honestly pay that much attention in it. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, you're going to show up. You're not going to know that much. Um, so if you don't get an internship your freshman year, I think this is an important note. Honestly, there's nothing to worry about because that's a very, very common occurrence. That's a yeah, that's a great point. Um, my, my first internship was after my sophomore year. I think that a lot of people, yeah, there is this sort of pressure to get an internship as quickly as possible. <laughs> um, when in right. reality, it's it's actually quite uncommon, yeah. I would say, for people to have yeah. a, an internship after their freshman year because of what you said. You just yeah, don't have yeah. the knowledge yet. Um, it's really surprising. It's actually very, very rare. So, yeah, yeah completely relax. All good. Yeah. Uh, that being said, yeah, I think that applying in the fall is generally um, the more common one. But like you said, given our advice to go for a company that's maybe uh, not the super competitive ones for your first one, a lot of those do have later cycles and will be hiring in the spring. Um, but as far as where you can apply, right, I think that uh, there are a lot of, if you're at a big university, there will be a lot of outreach programs. Um, sometimes companies will work directly with universities. And then there are things like career fairs. I think that career fairs, I generally didn't get that much out of them. Um, so I tended to go more for the online application route um, or through ref referrals directly. Um, 
But uh, I'm curious your thoughts on that career fairs and how to uh, actually apply to these places. Yeah, honestly, my experience with career fairs wasn't all that great. Uh, at Georgia Tech, where we went, there's a massive CS program, okay? And the CS career fair is, it is chaotic. It's a mess. You show up, there are lines, literally like hundreds of people along, especially for these bigger companies like, you know, Google. I remember that's the classic one. Literally, there's a line like wrapping around the entire building for. Um, and, and honestly, it's just a really kind of depressing environment to be in, in my opinion. Like you're going to show up, right? Maybe you're a freshman, you're a sophomore, whatever. You show up and you just honestly feel like an object because there are just so many infinite replacements of you right behind you. It, you just feel kind of de dehumanized in a sense. It, it's not a really great feeling, to be honest. Yeah, um, I think that your <laughs> imposter syndrome, we, we, we'll, I'm sure at some point yeah, talk about imposter yeah, yeah. syndrome. I think it's never worse than at a career fair, um, especially for computer science. Also, I think that in general, they you know, you stand in a massive line, you get to the front, they sell it, they tell you, oh, thanks, apply online. And so that's, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a classic. That's the classic, yo, thanks, apply online. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, but that being said, I think that um, the many companies will post their internship job listings on different job listing sites, um, but they're generally not that hard to find, right? If you have a company in mind, look up that, look up internship role, look up internship applications. Um, they'll be on sites like LinkedIn or uh, Indeed. Some go on Workday, some have their own company portals. Um, mm -hmm. But in, in general, uh, you're, you're a Google search away from finding the online application. And oftentimes they will have a spot as well for referrals um, who referred you. And then uh, usually if you do have an internal referral, there's something on the inside where they'll go through their own process, the person who already works there right. to make sure that you're in the system. Yeah, I feel like an underrated use or, or resource, maybe you use this was Google careers, like the Google jobs tab or whatever. I would always Google like software engineering internship Atlanta or whatever, and then go to the Google one and like comb it for like whatever the last drop I could find, you know? Yeah. Um, or I feel like also kind of underrated is directly going to the company's career site, yeah. right? Like the individual career site. Uh, that's something maybe they don't populate for whatever reason on another like kind of catch all job listing. Um, so you have to go directly to that employer's page and then kind of search for it yourself. Um, so definitely don't neglect that as well. Yeah, I think that um, we've kind of covered a lot of bases when it comes to um, ways that you can, you know, the route that we would recommend, again, the sort of blueprint um, to getting your first internship. I do want to acknowledge um, something, which is that it's different for every person at the stage they're at. You know, you might have switched majors. You might just be a little bit behind academically um, or for whatever reason. Uh, I don't think that you should feel this underlying pressure that you're for some reason behind because it's so easy to compare yourself, especially in a field like computer science or software engineering to someone who did get the you know meta after their freshman year for example which is again so incredibly rare and you just Such need an anomaly yeah you yeah. need to recognize that and you need to recognize that um as long as you're making strides to to doing what you want to do and get into the field then you're on your own time frame and that's the perfect time frame for you exactly you know slow and steady runs the race so all right, we've covered a lot of topics when it comes to getting your first software engineering internship. Uh, we sort of described it as our roadmap, our blueprint, talked about some anecdotes and stuff. Um, as we sort of culminate the episode, we had an idea for a segment um, that I think is gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, those who follow me on Instagram, there was a Google form on my story where I asked, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who ask for advice from me and I just simply don't have the time to answer everybody. But there's a chance that you would be answered today as we sort of go through your situation and give our perspectives on it. Um, so yeah, our unfiltered kind of spur of the moment advice. Yep. I, I made clear that everybody is comfortable with their situations being read. Um, maybe we won't have as many user submissions as in the future because we are people who are brutally honest. We want you. We want to help you. Right. We don't want to coddle you. Um, and so uh, that's sort of the thought behind this episode. All right. The first one is actually uh, Ben from Los Angeles. Ben is 16 years old. 
All right, Ben, uh, this is what you said. All right, so I go to a non-target school in Minnesota. I have double majors in computer science and data science with a GPA of 3.5. My freshman summer, which is currently ongoing, I'm doing an internship in mechanical and electrical engineering. For my next summer, sophomore summer, I want to break into big tech with CS internships. I will have taken data structures and algorithms by then. Could you please give a bunch of tips on what my next step should be? P.S. I have three on-campus jobs, which include IT technician of the IT department, student center manager, RA for my dorm, and you're also the VP of your college's CS club. What are your thoughts, Ben? Yeah, so first of all, I want to say congratulations. You know, a 3.5 GPA, that's actually very good. I want to say props for that. And also props for getting an internship. You know, that's not that's not easy to do, uh, especially in any major, right? So congratulations on your 3.5 GPA and also getting an internship your freshman summer. Um, I do want to mention that it is a little bit unrealistic to go from a non-software engineering internship directly to big tech, uh, especially as a non-CS major. So you may want to adjust your expectations there and instead shoot for a software engineering internship next summer as opposed to gunning directly for big tech. Um, yeah, that's some great advice. I'd like to correct myself. Sorry, that was Ali from Pakistan. He's 21. Uh, we will talk about Ben's situation later. So sorry about that correction. Um, yeah, I think that uh, another thing is that it sounds like you have a lot of things going. And as we sort of talked about today, I think that there is sort of some very specific stuff that you can focus on to improve your situations directly for software engineering and being so scattered and having your motivations driven in so many different directions is going to make it fundamentally more difficult to get the thing that you want. And for a software engineering internship, stuff like your different uh, on-campus uh, commitments might be actually detracting from time you have to commit to stuff that would give you a better chance. Yeah, I just want to note that focus is really your best ally here. You want to focus your energy on one or two specific things. Um, having your attention kind of diverted in all these different directions, it might be beneficial, but personally, I like to focus on quality over quantity. And that's kind of something I always preach, right? So really focus on one or two of those activities that you, you really, really enjoy and kind of get rid of the rest because it's an easy trap to fall into to think you need to do everything all at once all the time but it's simply just unrealistic and unmanageable yeah that's great um moving right into the next person we have jack from washington dc he is 21 years old and jack says I'm going into my senior year studying CS at a very good university. I'd like to pursue software engineering, but I'm graduating a semester early with no internship experience during my undergrad. Right now I do CS research with my school, but aside from that, I feel I have very little experience that I need to do to get going in industry. Is the internship experience absolutely critical to get a start in the industry? What is the likelihood of interning the summer after my graduation? Or should I skip it altogether? And where do I go from here? Uh, I just want to point out that most internships actually have a clause in them that states you need to be an active student while engaging in that internship. So it may not be realistic to get an internship after you graduate, unfortunately. Um, but something I do want to point out is I've actually I actually saw this a lot in college, and I'm not sure what you can speak to it, Carter, but I saw a lot of students, particularly in computer science, which was my major, who were really obsessed with graduating early for some reason. And to be honest, I never understood it because I was like, you know, these are a precious, th these are like precious years in your life, really where you're responsibility free and you have a lot of freedom to engage in activities and kind of play around and experiment in your life. And so I never really understood the motivation to graduate early and, you know, get right out into the real world. You know, it's like I kind of wanted to enjoy my time in college and not rush things a little bit. Um, so I, I kind of felt a little bit sorry for those people who felt that they needed to rush through this experience. I completely agree. I think enjoying your time in college and there's actually benefits to it. Um, that being said, you know, I want to be able to help you, Jack, as much as possible, which is that I think it's absolutely possible to uh, get a good job after college with no internship experience prior. Um, 
similarly to what we were saying with your first internship being at a company that maybe um, is not the biggest name of the bunch, uh, I think that there is something to be said about kind of doing your time um, and showing that you're worth it, that you have the experience that you may have to um, you may have to go through that process just as a full time position as opposed to an intern. I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but my recommendation would be get a job in the field, break in, even if you went to a great school. And from there, you can always pivot. You know, once you prove your worth, you move. Yeah, definitely. I I think this there's a misconception that you have to get into a like juggernaut company immediately out of school. But when you go to the actual industry, you realize that that's actually not the most common path. The most common path is people who have transitioned from these lesser known companies into those more juggernaut, well-known clout ones. Completely agree. All right, we're gonna go to the next one here. We have Ahmed from Oman, who's 21, and Ahmed said, it's my last semester at uni and I am graduating from Florida Tech with a bachelor's of science in computer science. Little background on me is that I've had a couple internships and I'm a great web developer. Well, that's what I think. I'm also familiar with various programming languages and frameworks. However, I don't consider myself a great programmer. What is your best advice? Yeah, I I think this is a a classic case of imposter syndrome. You know, on the one hand, you're saying, hey, I'm a great web developer, but that's what I think, right? So you're kind of disqualifying this statement right off the bat. Um, So, you know, have a little bit of more confidence in yourself. But also, you have multiple internships underneath your belt, right? So you have like direct proof that, hey, I can go and I can get a job and an employer finds me as a valuable candidate. Yeah, I I completely agree. It sounds like you are qualified. You're also graduating from Florida Tech, um, which is a pretty good um, computer science school. And uh, really, I think that you need to have some confidence in yourself. And uh, as far as what advice I could give you, um, there's no technical advice I could give you to become a better developer because at the end of the day, you've learned what you've learned and you have the experiences you are. There's no magic pill I could give you that's like, oh, now I can become a better developer. No, the answer is keep doing what you're doing. You're yeah. doing great. Yeah, yeah. And just, uh, you know, prove it to people. Yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. All right. Uh, next we have... Pedro Ross from Brazil, who is 17. Pedro said, I came to the U.S. alone to learn coding and pursue a high-tech job aiming to make my family proud. Currently in high school, my dream is to attend Stanford. Initially, I considered mobile development. However, my passion for cybersecurity has now shifted my focus. My question is, is Stanford a lofty aspiration? Or if Stanford is a lofty aspiration, would uh, going to another school like the UCs be an issue? Um, I want to give you props, first of all, for, you know, moving to the United States alone, you know, without your family. That's, that's majorly impressive, especially for somebody who's in high school. That's, that's like seriously massive independence and you're crushing it out there. But I do want to say, you know, Stanford has like, I don't even know, like a 3% acceptance rate, maybe 4% at best. It's like, this is kind of a, a moonshot here, right? You can't really bank on getting into Stanford. You know, it's it's not something that's bankable, let's just say. So, yeah, I mean, going to the UCs or really any accredited university is a more than fine proposition. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think that um, the... the f- way you phrased it is interesting because it almost you're asking whether going to the ucs would be acceptable compared to stanford and the truth is going to the ucs period is incredible um going to stanford is obviously even more incredible but going to any like you said a generally four-year accredited university will give you a great education and you will be able to enter the field of computer science as such um you need to understand that the you you it almost seems like you're a victim of the um elitist attitude of like mm, uh yeah. i need i need this school if i need to do it that's not the case yeah definitely don't fall into that like whole elitist trap I definitely did it when I was in high school. Um, I'm I'm sure Carter, you oh, have sure plenty did. of stories, but yeah, it's it, it's just not healthy. All right, next we have Luke C from Birmingham, Alabama, who is 22. Luke says, 
I would like advice on how to use software development as a way to earn good money on the side or, or, on, or on the side of another job. Making money in your sleep is always a good topic. It would also be nice to get some specifics on how to stand out as a software developer, considering there are so many of us. Thanks in advance. Thanks for the question, Luke. <laughs> Uh, this is a very interesting question. Um, yeah, I, I think the the notion that you can just code this like autonomous entity that will make you money. I mean, please, you know, tell me how you can do that because I want that. I mean, like, but being realistic here, like that just is not something that is feasible. Uh, and if it were feasible, the people who have made that will not divulge your secrets anytime soon because they're probably sitting on their th ivory thrones in a tower, you know, tossing around their cash of billions of dollars and, you know, balling out. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, yeah, the passive income, kind of what you said is, um, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Um, as far as making money on the side, that generally is something like freelancing, which is absolutely doable, but it's at the expense of of either your time or your other job. You know, you won't be able to rise as fast because you're putting effort into something else. Um, mm -hmm. In general, I, it, and then your last comment about standing out as a software developer um, is sort of antagonistic to what you just said because standing out as a software developer means becoming a really good software developer um, because there are a lot of software developers, which uh, usually means diving into that one thing and not being split and trying to do coding on the side of a job. Yeah, I think, especially this is something I've realized, you know, working full time is, hey, you actually don't have a ton of time outside of work. You know, once you finish that eight, nine hour stint, it's like, okay, I need to go work out and then I need to go to bed. It's, you know, you don't have a lot of time to work with. So you're really best served by focusing all of your attention on your career during the workday and then investing in yourself like into your actual body and your 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 physical health outside of that that's just kind of my approach yep uh and lastly we are back to ben uh los angeles 16 years old um which it's kind of related uh who says I don't want to be stuck at an office job working nine to five. I'm also someone who especially enjoys the social aspects of what I do, but I do want to make an above average salary. Is software engineering right for me? Why don't you take this one? You take this one, Bax. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can come on on this, which is, um, you know, Ben, you're right at that age um, where I see this all the time, um, and it seems like there is nothing worse than a nine to five job that may as well be your personal, you know, hell. Um, and I get that, but nobody wants to, you know, work their life away. And I certainly don't feel like I am. Um, but there is something to be said about having uh, a drive and a determination to make money for yourself and to develop a career and to do that in a very competitive career and one that's very well respected, like software engineering. Um, I know that there's this attitude, you know, that you're supposed to make it and become an entrepreneur by the time you're 18 or 21. The truth is that that is so rare um, that if you want to explore that later in life, you can. Um, I promise you that the vast majority of Americans are in nine to fives and a good portion of those are very happy, living very fulfilled lives. Um, and if you're in software engineering, making well more than enough money to care for yourself, to care for others. Um, and so I wouldn't be, I would take a step back and ask yourself whether you're so scared of this nine to five, this sad office job because of the dialogue that you've been told mm -hmm. about nine to fives, or if it is something intrinsically that you feel like it, I just could never do it. Uh, I want to just quickly point out that you don't realize how young you are. I think actually Carter's done a video on this, but bro, I mean, you're 16. Yeah. You have, literally you're in like your youth like you are a teenager you should not be worrying about this right now per se i mean i think it's great that you have this kind of future oriented mindset but you know you're 16 so why don't you finish enjoying your high school experience then go to college enjoy that experience and, and then you can start worrying about these things later on right uh you know really enjoy the kind of stage of life that you're in now because you won't get it ever again right i mean you're 16 it's like so young yeah. even now at like 23 
I talk to people all the time, right? Mid thirties. And they're like, wow, you're a baby. And I'm like, you know, I am a baby. I feel like a baby. So, I mean, you're even more of a baby. So just relax a little bit. Yeah, that's great. I think the question is software engineering, right? For me involves a lot of other questions, which is your passions. Do you like doing it? You know, you shouldn't worry about the stuff that um, we just talked about. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, hopefully if you got your question answered, um, that you enjoyed our answers, that's a segment that we want to keep doing. Um, and I think it's time that we kind of wrap up this episode. Uh, so as we said, this was episode one of bits and barbells. If you have any topics that you'd like us to talk about, any ideas for episodes, any suggestions on how we can improve the production, etc., please leave <laughs> them in the comments below. Please subscribe mm -hmm. if you haven't already and liked, and do you, uh, have any parting words, Ben? Yeah, I mean, we're open to any and all suggestions here. I mean, we're both novices here. We don't pretend to be experts, especially in this realm. So please leave your advice below. We, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Yeah. Anybody who stayed to the end, we really appreciate you. Awesome.